Hi, welcome to this Corporate Mars video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the types of triangles practice questions. So if you need any extra help on types of triangles, if you go to corporatemavs.com forward slash content and scroll down to video 327, there's a video tutorial there on types of triangles. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's have a look at question number one. So question number one says, here's a list of names of triangles, equilateral, isosceles, scalene, and right-angled. And we've been asked to use the list to label each diagram correctly. So we've got our first triangle. Now as you can see, it's a right-angled triangle. So we're going to write down right-angle. So right-angled triangle. Okay, next one. As you can see here, we've got a triangle, and it's got two little dashes which show that this side and this side are the same length. As two sides are the same length, that will mean that it's an isosceles triangle. So isosceles. Part C, well, if we've got this triangle where the triangle has got three sides that have all got different lengths, and each of the three angles are different sizes, so that's a scalene triangle. And finally, part D, we've got a triangle, and each side of the triangle has got a dash which shows that they're the same length, so that's an equilateral triangle. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number two. Okay, question number two. Question number two, we've been asked to draw a right angle triangle. So we just need to draw a triangle with a right angle in it. So there's a vertical line, there's a horizontal line, so that will be a right angle, and then we can just join it up. So that will be a right angle triangle. Okay, question number three. Okay, question number three. Question number three says draw a scalene triangle. So a scalene triangle is a triangle where all three sides have got different lengths and the three angles are different sizes as well. So you get your ruler and pencil and make sure whenever you're drawing this that each of the three sides have got different length sides so you don't accidentally draw an isosceles or a equilateral triangle. So I'm gonna draw a base like so. I'm gonna choose this point and I'm gonna join it up with there and I'm gonna join this side up with that side there. So that is my scalene triangle, and I would get my ruler and just measure those and make sure that they're not the same lengths. Alternatively, I could draw a triangle which has an obtuse angle, so perhaps something like this, where it's got an angle bigger than 90 degrees, and then join that up. And then as long as those three sides have got different length sides, then it's a scalene triangle. Okay, question number four. So question number four says, shown below is a triangle. So we've got this triangle, and the triangle has got three angles, a 65 degree angle, a 65 degree angle, and a 50 degree angle. So because two angles are the same size, that will be an isosceles triangle, because an isosceles triangle has two equal angles, and it's also got two sides that are the same length as well. And in this triangle, that side would be the same length as that side. So because two angles are the same, the triangle will be isosceles. Question number five. Okay, let's have a look at question number five. So question number five, we've been given a triangle. So we've got this triangle and it's got a 60 degree angle and another 60 degree angle. And Richard says the triangle is isosceles, perhaps because it's got two equal angles. Martin says the triangle is a scalene triangle. Well, it's not gonna be scalene because in a scalene triangle, the angles are all different sizes. And Lauren says the triangle is equilateral. Who is right? Explain your answer. So actually, Lauren is the correct person. It is an equilateral triangle, and let's see why. Because the angles on the triangle add up to 180 degrees, if we add these two angles together, 60 plus 60, so 60 plus 60, that's equal to 120 degrees. And then if we take our 180 and take away the 120, we can see what's left for the angle at the top. 180 take away 120 is equal to 60. So that angle at the top will be equal to 60 degrees. So that is an equilateral triangle. Each of the angles is 60 degrees. So it's an equilateral triangle. So who is correct? Lauren. And I've just said Lauren is correct because all three angles are the same size, 60 degrees. Okay, question number six. Question number six, we've been asked to match each triangle to the correct name. So we've got on the left-hand side some triangles and we've got their names on the right-hand side. So let's start off with the right angle triangle. So the right angle triangle would be this triangle, the triangle with the right angle. Next, we've got an equilateral triangle. Well, the equilateral triangle, if you measure the lengths of the sides or the angles, you'll see it's the one at the bottom there. Now we've got two triangles left. We've got this triangle and this triangle. Now the triangle here, this triangle, the second one down, you can see that the two sides are the same length. And if you get your ruler, you can measure those. So that would match up with isosceles. An isosceles triangle is the bottom option there. So that one would match up there. And finally, scalene triangle, the triangle at the top here. If you measure the three sides, you'll see they're not all the same length side. So that is a scalene triangle. And that's it. So the top one matches up with scalene. The second one matched up with isosceles. The third one down matched up with right angle triangle. And finally, the last triangle matched up with equilateral triangle. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. 
Okay, question number seven. So question number seven says, on the grid above, draw a right angle triangle. So we want to draw a right angle triangle on this grid. So we want to draw a triangle with a 90 degree angle. So if we do a vertical line, like so, and it goes down, and then we do a horizontal line, like so, and then join it up, that angle in the bottom left hand corner would be a right angle. So let's just mark it in, that's a right angle. And that means that's a right angle triangle. Okay, part B. Part B says, on the grid above, draw an isosceles triangle. So we want to draw a triangle which has got two angles that are the same size and two sides of the same length as well. Now, whenever I'm drawing an isosceles triangle, I like to draw the base. And so I'm going to draw a base here that is four across. And then the top of the triangle will be directly above the middle of that base. So if I choose this point here and join it up to here and to here, that would be an isosceles triangle because the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same length as each other. We could have drawn that top point anywhere above the midpoint of the line. So if I chose this point here, say, that would be an isosceles triangle also because the left-hand side and the right-hand side are the same length and so on. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So let's have a look at question number eight. So question number eight says, on the isometric grid above, draw an equilateral triangle. So on this isometric grid, if we choose a point, just say this point here, if we join it up to the point above it, or to this point, or to this point, each of those lines are the same length. So if we want to draw an equilateral triangle, which is a triangle which has three equal length sides, we can join that point to that point, that point to that point, and that point to that point, and each of those lengths would be the same length as each other, so that would be an equilateral triangle. That's quite a small equilateral triangle. We could draw a bigger one, so we could go one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and that would be an equilateral triangle as well. Okay, let's have a look at question number nine. So question number nine says, shown below is a triangle. So we've got this triangle and we've got the sides measured for us. So 3.8 centimeters, 3.9 centimeters and 3.8 centimeters. And it obviously says not drawn accurately. And if you measure those on your page, they probably won't be those lengths. So we've got the measurements and we're asked what type of triangle is shown. Now, as you can see, two sides have got equal length. So that will be an isosceles triangle. So that is an isosceles triangle. And the next part, part B says, work out the perimeter of the triangle. So the perimeter is the distance around the outside of the triangle. So if we start at the top, we could do 3.8 plus 3.8 plus 3.9. And that will give us the perimeter of the triangle. So 3.8 plus 3.8 plus 3.9. And if we look up, it is a calculator question. So we can type that in our calculator and get the answer. So 3.8 plus 3.8 plus 3.9 equals... 11.5. So the answer would be 11.5 centimetres. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number 11 says, make an accurate drawing of an equilateral triangle side length 6 centimetres. Now you can do this question two different ways. I'm going to do it using, it just says an accurate drawing, so I'm just going to use a ruler and a protractor in this video to draw an accurate drawing of an equilateral triangle of side length 6 centimetres. You could also construct an equilateral triangle using a compass or a pair of compasses and a pencil and a ruler, and you could measure a 6 centimetre line and use your compasses to construct that triangle. And if you go to corbmavs.com forward slash contents and go down to the video on constructing triangles side 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 or SSS I believe it would be called that will show you how to do that okay let's have a look at how to do an accurate drawing off this triangle then so let's move our protractor away for the moment and let's start off by drawing our six centimeter base so we want to draw an equilateral triangle so each of the sides are the same length so let's start at zero and let's go across to one two three four five six centimeters so that is our six centimeter base of our triangle now we're going to get our protractor and we're going to move our protractor up to the left hand side of this line. So, so as you can see, the cross of the protractor has been placed on the left hand side of the line and the zero is on the line. Now, whenever we look at our zero, it is on the inside. So we're going to go around to 60 degrees because an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees. So let's go up to 60 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and put a dot. And we're now going to draw a six centimeter line starting here and either going through that point or towards that point, depending on how big your protractor is. So as you can see, I've lined up the ruler so that the zero is on the left-hand side of the line and the ruler's going along in a straight line through that point and we can go on to six centimetres. So we'll just draw a line starting here and going all the way through that point to six centimetres, like so. And then finally, we could get our protractor, put it over on this side and we could 
put it over that side and we could start at zero and go across to here and then draw a line and it will go straight through it and touch that point or at this point where we know we've got six centimeters and six centimeters and a 60 degree angle in there we can just get a ruler and join those last two points up so we can just join that because we know it's six centimeters and there and that will be our equilateral triangle so that is a six centimeter line that is a six centimeter line and if you measure that that will be a six centimeter line that was a 60 degree angle we could measure that one and see that's a 60 degree angle as well and the angle at the top will also be 60 degrees and that's it okay let's have a look at question number 11. so question number 11 says circle the triangle with the most lines of symmetry so we've got a scalene triangle an equilateral isosceles and right angled and i've drawn some triangles beneath each of them just so we can see them so the number of lines of symmetry so a scalene triangle well we can't draw a line of symmetry here so it would have zero an equilateral triangle would have three lines of symmetry it'd have a vertical one like so it would have another one going through here going through the middle of that side and another one going this way so that would have three lines of symmetry an isosceles triangle would have one line of symmetry like so and a right angle triangle well this one has zero or it can be possible to draw a right angle triangle with a line of symmetry it would be an isosceles triangle where you would have a 90 degree angle and two 45 degree angles so it would have one or zero but it's definitely not the most lines of symmetry anyway so the answer would be equilateral okay next question question number 12 Okay, question number 12. Question 12 says, two small congruent right angle triangles are joined together to make a larger triangle, as shown below. So we've got two triangles that have been joined together. So they've both got a 55 degree angle, they've both got right angles, and they've been joined together to make a larger triangle. So the larger triangle would look something like this. So the larger triangle would look something like this, where they've been joined together, they would have the 55 degree angle on the left hand side, the 55 degree angle on the right hand side, the two right angles joined together to make the straight line, and the angle at the top here, well we've got 55 plus 55, so 55 plus 55 will be equal to 110, so 180 take away 110 would give us 70 degrees. So the whole angle here at the top would be 70 degrees. So that would be the triangle, it might be a bit bigger, you know that, you know, obviously if the these triangles joined together. That's a sketch of what the triangle would look like. And we've been given four statements and we've got to tick whether it's true or false. So our first statement is the larger triangle will be a right angle triangle. Well, if we have a look at our triangle, it's not a right angle triangle. It's an isosceles triangle, but it's not a right angle triangle. So that would be false. Our second statement is the larger triangle will be an isosceles triangle. Well, it will be. It's got two 55 degree angles, so true. Okay, let's have a look at our third statement. So the third statement says the perimeter of the larger triangle is twice the perimeter of one of the smaller triangles. So what it's saying is that the perimeter of this larger one would be the same as double the perimeter of one of these triangles or the perimeter of this triangle plus the perimeter of this triangle because they're identical. But if you have a look, whenever we four put these two triangles together, the vertical line here and the vertical line here join together to go inside of the shape. So the perimeter of the larger triangle would only be this distance plus this distance plus this distance plus this distance. So the perimeter of the larger triangle won't actually be double the perimeter of one of the smaller ones. It'll actually be smaller. So that will be false. And the last statement is the area of the larger triangle is twice the area of one of the smaller triangles. Well, that would be true because we're just joining them up. We just make it like we're just joining them. If the area of this one was 40 centimeters squared and the area of this one was 40 centimeters squared, when we join them up, the area of the whole thing would be 80 centimeters squared. So that would be true. So let's have a look at question number 13. Question number 13 says, shown below are circles with 12 equally spaced points. So we've got 12 points going around the outside of the circle. And we've been asked to join three of them to make an isosceles triangle. So an isosceles triangle uh, is a triangle where two of the sides are the same length. So let's choose the point at the top here and let's just join it to maybe this point here and this point here. Those two lines would be the same length as each other. And then if we just join it across there, that would be an isosceles triangle. And there's other isosceles triangles you could draw, but that's just one that I've chosen. Okay, part B. Part B says join three points to make an equilateral triangle. So we've got this circle and we've got the points around the circle and we want to draw an equilateral triangle. So that means that each of the sides are going to be the same length. So that means that whenever I join these points up, I want to make sure they're evenly spaced around the triangle. So there's 12 points. If we divide that by three, we get four. So that means that we're going to go one, two, three, four and join them up and then one two three four and join those up and one two three four and join those up and as you can see that would be our equilateral triangle so part c part c says join three points to make a scalene triangle so that's going to be a triangle where none of the three sides have got the same length so i'm just going to start by joining up that one and that one 
and they're going to join that one and that one and then join that one and that one and that would be a scalene triangle because none of the three sides have got the same length and there's loads more different options you could draw for that one but we've drawn up three points to make a scalene triangle okay let's have a look at our next question okay question number 14. question number 14 says talker says i've drawn a triangle with an acute angle so that's an angle that is bigger than zero but less than 90 degrees a right angle well that's 90 degrees and an obtuse angle well an obtuse angle is an angle that's bigger than 90 but less than 180 degrees so it could be something for instance 100 degrees or something like that and we've been asked to explain why tolga must be wrong well the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees and a right angle plus another right angle will be 180 degrees. So if we had a right angle plus an obtuse angle, that's going to be bigger than 180 degrees. And we haven't even drawn the acute angle yet. So it's not possible to have a triangle with a right angle and an obtuse angle in it. So we would just write that down. So I've written down it's not possible to have a triangle with a right angle and an obtuse angle because a right angle is 90 and an obtuse angle is larger than 90 degrees as the three angles that you know that's even before we even add the acute angle on in a triangle have to add to 180 degrees so it's not possible to have a right angle and an obtuse angle in a triangle and that's it so let's have a look at question number 15. so question 15 says lily has three different wooden rods so we've got these three rods one with a length of seven centimeters one with a length of 18 centimeters and one with a length of nine centimeters we've been asked to explain why she cannot make a triangle well if we start up with the 18 centimeter rod like so so if that's 18 centimeters and we put the seven centimeter rod there and the nine centimeter rod here what you'd find is the two rods the seven centimeter and the nine centimeter rod wouldn't reach each other so because if you had 18 centimeters there and you had seven centimeters here and nine centimeters there the seven centimeters no matter even if we put it as close to the line as possible and the nine centimeter rod if that's close to the line as possible the, that they would only actually add together to be 16 centimeters it wouldn't reach to make the 18 centimeters the length of the total length and you can just explain that you can just explain that if we put an 18 centimeter rod down that the seven centimeter rod and the nine centimeter rod wouldn't reach each other another way to consider it is by using what we call the triangle inequality theorem and i've just made a video on that in corporate maths it's a great video and if we had a triangle now this isn't possible but i'm going to draw a triangle with seven centimeters nine centimeters and 18 centimeters so if we've got a triangle, the larger side of the triangle has to be smaller than the sum of the other two sides. So 7 plus 9 is equal to 16 centimetres. So the length of this side, this side here, would have to be less than 16 centimetres. So 18 is too long. So we just explain that. So there's two different things we could do. We could write down, if Lily put down the 18 centimetre rod, the 7 centimetre rod and the 9 centimetre rod wouldn't reach each other, so it wouldn't be possible to make a triangle. Alternatively, you could say, the length of the larger side of the triangle has to be shorter than the sum of the other two sides, and 18 centimetres is not less than 7 plus 9 centimetres, so it wouldn't be possible to draw that triangle. Okay, and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the types of triangles, practice questions on corporate maths. If you want extra help on types of triangles, you can watch video 327 on corporate maths, and that's the video tutorial on types of triangles. I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, and thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.